Greetings guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Monette and this is my channel Evolve with Monette. For those of you that are new here, I'm a professional intuitive empath. Listen guys, I wanted to chat with you about praying for your enemy. Yes, y'all. Buckle up, buttercups. Let's do the real work. Here's the deal. There's a song that I heard last night. Um, pray and pray for my downfall. Pray and pray for my downfall. They pray and pray. Yeah. Uh, and there's some nods to, um, I think there's Wu-Tang Clan as well as, uh, I don't even know who pray and pray for my downfall. Uh, MCs have the gall to pray and pray. It's Biggie Smalls. Pray and pray for my downfall. But I don't know. I feel like that, that other people always kind of loop that into their songs or kind of rap about it. But when I heard it, I thought about the fact that a lot of us on this journey have people that are actually praying for our downfall, right? I know that I have people that are praying for my downfall because they didn't feel like I uh, deserve what I got or whatever. I mean, whatever. People are crazy. But what I... um. I've never <laughs> related to that. Anything I've ever wanted in my life, guys, uh, anything that I've ever seen that somebody else had that I may have wanted, I was like, hey, I think I can work for that. Maybe I can figure out how to do that. I don't know why people like uh, don't think that in life. People just are like, I would like to have your thing. It's crazy to me. It's like cultivate your own thing. You're not supposed to have the exact thing that somebody else has. But here's the deal. Message. That was just a little aside, I guess. <laughs> Create and love and go after the thing that is yours. But Regarding praying for your enemies, when I found myself understanding that somebody that had shapeshifted was an enemy to me, I prayed for her. I prayed for her every time she said a word, y'all. Just the same way that they pray for your downfall, I prayed for her, but not for her downfall. I wanted her to have every single thing that she wanted. And you would think, why, Monette, would you want someone to have everything that they wanted when they were wishing that you had nothing and they were delighting maybe in your downfall and waiting for it and rubbing their hands together like the Birdman meme, if any of you guys have seen that, which is um, this kind of energy, if you've never seen it, of someone who's like gleefully waiting for a terrible outcome because they feel like they want to knock you down a peg or two. Man, those people are broken AF. I know the person that I was dealing with was super broken in, in, in every single way and had zero self-esteem, uh, no matter what she said. In fact, there was a lot of posturing and overcompensating for what she thought. She wanted everybody to see as self-esteem. I knew her deeply. I knew exactly how broken she was, how weak, how insecure, how jealous. She lived in a constant cesspool of lack, yeah? So when people like that are trying to stab you in the back, you're like, why? Now, I did say why. Y'all know it. But here's what I did that I thought was really powerful. Every word that she said, I sealed it, yeah? Do you realize, Empath, that you're powerful enough to do that? I think we take for granted our gifts. I don't. <laughs> I have, and I did. But I no longer do. And that's why I want to share this with you, because I don't want you guys to think that someone is who is around you may be degrading and you can't extract yourself yet. Yeah. OK, a lot. Not everybody is at the position that I'm in. And trust me, for many years of my life, I was not in that position. So this is not me coming in all gloating like and, and be like me because I, I figured it out and uh, escaped barely. Yeah. And I think I've been pretty honest about that on this channel. Pray for them. So there were things that she would say to me in the last times, moments, years, whatever, as everything dwindled down. And uh, I think one time she said to me, I will never forget it. We were riding down Kent Dairy, about to turn down Kent Dairy, and her hair was very long. She always grew it out when I was around. And that's just, that was just our weird thing. But um, it was very long. And I remember us taking a turn down Kent Dairy, and it literally fell away from her face like a veil in one sheet. It was like mask off. And she said, you know, I think I'm going to be less selfish this year. And right there, I said a prayer. And so it is. Amen. That's the prayer, guys. It's not some deep thing. You don't have to learn a million mantras. And so it is. Amen. What she didn't understand was by saying that, that life was about to strip her to bare bones. That everything that she was comfortable with and everything that she had known was about 
to be turned upside down, topsy-turvy. Every bit of stability that she felt that she had attained was going to be taken from her by her own words and actions. Guys, you don't have to wish anything bad on anybody who is doing bad to you or treating you badly. If they are bad-minded, they are generating and creating their own energy. <laughs> I'm hearing, um, I don't even know if this is the right word, subterfuge, not, sus not subterfuge. I'm thinking of, um, those electrical nuclear plants. There is some word there that I can't, it's not, it's escaping my brain. If it comes up, I will say it. But they are generating their own toxicity, y'all, okay? You don't have to pray it. You don't have to pray it over them. You don't have to wish it over them. I wanted her to have every single thing she wanted. When she made strong declarations, lying declarations, though, but strong declarations to me about what she did or didn't want or about the state of her life or singlehood or, and her desires. And she made a lot of declarations in the last couple of years about how everybody has terrible marriages and she doesn't want to be meanwhile back at the farm she was interrupting everybody's marriages but she want she was like oh, marriage is terrible i just want to be single and free everybody that i know at my office is miserable in their marriages and da -da -da -da. you know marriages are an interesting thing different subject different day but uh i said okay girl have it your way so this person who i knew was deeply wracked with loneliness and wanted companionship, decreed over herself that she wanted to have nothing to do with partnership and companionship. And what I said, when she kept saying it over and over, even though she was lying as she was saying it, as she was actively involved in companionship, but just nothing that would ever be satisfactory. And so it is. Amen. When she said to me various things about the new life that she would begin and how she was so sick of her child and so ready to get rid of him, uh, unwisely, I asked her questions. I said, spend time, enjoy that, soak it in. But when she said it over and over again and then started to neglect and not pay attention to a child crying out for help, I said, and so it is. Amen. And what I mean by that is the very thing that she just thought were words. Our words are power. The Bible says uh, po life and death is in the tongue. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Um, your word is your wand is a book I'm looking at on my shelf right now. And so it is. Amen. And that means that never in her life will that child be in her life in that capacity that he was at that time. Sure, he'll come back. Sure, he'll visit. I'm sure things eventually will be fine. But she spoke away her blessings. And I just listened while she was backstabbing and, and trying to make me less than. And that's okay. And so it is. Amen. Embrace your power. I didn't have to get all rah-rah with her and be like, Bia, I know what you're doing, da 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 and get super hood and super ratchet. We all have that in us, uh, whether you're black or white. <laughs> we all have some ratchet hood levels in us to, um, to, to, to engage in drama or to be in a verbal uh, altercation or fight, yeah? But I didn't want to fight her. She was doing a bang up job fighting herself. A lot of people in your life may be doing the same thing. Our words are powerful. When your enemies are at your back, even if they're covert or overt or passive aggressive or not, when they decree something over their life, tie that ish in a knot with a, and so it is. Amen. Every single thing that she wanted, she manifested. She now has uncertainty. She now has unhappiness. She now is unfulfilled. She doesn't have any close connections. Even if they feel close, they are not what she thought they would be. And so it is. Amen. I didn't do it out of spite. I didn't do it to punish her, to get her back and treat her right. I only did what she willed and decreed. I did not speak anything over her, though she did speak things over me. I just sealed with a prayer, <laughs> with the purest of intentions. If this is what you want, then this is what you will have then. And so it is. Amen. Do not forget how powerful you are. You get to seal people's curses over themselves. I don't curse anybody because I know how karma works. And I also know this video coming up. Spite produces the worst karma. There are a lot of things in that dynamic and in many dynamics I've had with toxic people where they have spoken ill over me and 
been spiteful for no reason. And I was talking about this last night. It reminds me of that Cardi B meme. What was the reason? Tell me what was the reason? <laughs> if I can link it below, I will. Sometimes we want a reason and we want closure and all that stuff. My closure was in those moments I sat right with her. Everything she said that she spoke over herself that was toxic, she has now manifested and will continue to manifest. And even when she's like, I want to get out of this, I don't want this anymore. That's not what I meant. And so it is. Amen. You are far more powerful than you give yourself credit for. You don't have to curse anybody or light any candles or be anybody's witches hiding behind the door. You can be the enchantress by the door, the empath and the earth angel, there to teach lessons to help people ascend. But if they don't want to do that, and so it is, amen. Yeah, yeah. I love that energy. Uh, it helped free me so that I didn't have to wait for closure to see what would be. I already knew what would be because she spoke it all herself out of her own mouth into existence. All I did was seal it with a kiss. <laughs> the kiss of life. The kiss of alchemy. The kiss of bringing something to fruition. Those are the gifts that you're imbued with, empath. And so it is. Amen. When someone is being degrading, or they're shading, or they're hating, and then they start speaking things about their life, listen quietly. You don't always have to fight. Just pray. And so it is. Amen. I imagine the person in that I dealt with didn't imagine the way that that year would go for her. She wanted a thing. She got all the things she wanted and more. She manifested beautifully from lessons that I had taught her. And then she started to be cruel to me. That's not how the universe works. This isn't about me. That's a universal law. If you do that to someone, if you are unkind to someone who has been kind to you, the universe will set a karmic balance. And some of your worst nightmares will come true. And not because anybody wished bad juju on you, but because you were your own bad juju. You get it, guys? They were their own bad juju. She was her own worst nightmare. She spoke every ill thing over her life. And she will not find satisfaction hither to or fro. Because that is a thing that she didn't really want to know. And you know how I know? Because she said it out of her mouth. And all I did was seal it. Wait for your enemy, your prakalisha, your hater, your frenemy to reveal it. And then, my sweet empaths, engage your power and pray. And so it is. Amen. And then move on with your day. So good chatting with you guys today. Come back and join me next time and we will continue to evolve together.